Hey everybody, it's D. It's the music. Let's make a pan flute. The pan flute, also known as pan pipes or syrinx, is a musical instrument based on the principle of a closed tube consisting of multiple pipes of gradually increasing length. Multiple varieties of pan flutes have been popular as folk instruments. The pipes are typically made from bamboo, giant cane, or local reeds. Other materials include wood, plastic, metal, and ivory. The pan flute or pan pipes was a musical wind instrument first used by the ancient Greeks. Most commonly played by shepherds, the earliest use was in the Cycladic Islands in the 3rd millennium BCE, and representations of the instrument run right through the history of Greek art. In Greek mythology, Pan, the patron of shepherds, fell in love with the nymph Syrinx, daughter of Ladon, the river god. Fleeing his attentions, Syrinx pleaded with Zeus to save her, and just when Pan captured her, Zeus turned the nymph into reeds. Enraged, Pan smashed the reeds into pieces, but on reflection he was struck with remorse and wept and kissed the broken reeds, all that remained of his beloved. As he kissed the reeds, he discovered that his breath could carry the sounds from them, and so he made the musical instrument that would carry the lost nymph's name. In other words... Well, wasn't that interesting about Pan and his long lost love Syrinx? Well, first of all, Pan was one of the oldest gods in Greek mythology, and he was born with a beard and goat legs and a tail and pug nose. Talk about original, but I tell you what, Zeus and all those other gods, his parents on Mount Olympus really loved him because they named him Pan, which means all. Ah, isn't that sweet? Well, it looks like Syrinx was all over the forest. And just because she thought she was all that, Pan chased her like other men and other gods in the forest chased her all around the forest. And she was like, look, y'all. I got this goat boy chasing me all over the place. I got things to do. I need y'all to help me. And then guess what? what? So Pan probably followed her for days, if not weeks and months around this forest. And finally he came to a river and the gods came to her rescue and she vanished. And then what happened? She vanished into reeds, little wood-like things that we call Pan flute pipes. And as the wind blew through those reeds, it reminded Pan of her sweet voice. And therefore, the pan flute was born, according to Greek mythology. And just another fun fact, he actually put nine of them together to make his pan flute. In our demonstration, we're going to use eight, but feel free to use nine if you have them. Let's make a pan flute. Are you ready? Let me show you what to do. First you're gonna need to get a pair of scissors. To get a pair of scissors. To get a pair of scissors. And then you're gonna need to use some supervision. To use adult supervision. To use some supervision. And then you're gonna need to have some masking tape or other sticky tape. To have some masking tape or other sticky tape. And then you're gonna need to get some drinking straws. To get some drinking straws. To get some drinking straws. And then you're gonna need to have eight straws. To have eight straws. To have eight straws. One. Two. two. Seven, eight. And then you're gonna need to put it all together. To put it all together. 
to put them all together. And then you're gonna need to put them all together. To put them all together. To put them all together. And then you're gonna need to put them all together. To put them all together. To put them all together. And then you're gonna need to put them all together. To put them all together. To put them all together. Let's put it together. We got our scissors. We got our masking tape. And we got our eight straws. Now we're going to need to put them all together. I'm simply going to line them up just like this. And then I'm going to grab my tape. Not going to need a lot. And I'm going to lay the first layer down right on top just like that so that they all stay together. And I'm going to flip it over. And simply add another layer of tape just to make sure that they stay in place. Just like that. We want to make sure that they, the ends line up. If they don't line up, we can simply take our scissors because we are actually going to cut them in a diagonal because what we know, because what we know is when we have a pan flute, a pan flute is usually consists of several different pipes at different lengths. So in order to accommodate that, we want to get different pitches in each pipe, technically. So we're going to have long to short. And the way to do that is we're going to cut it in a diagonal. So you're simply going to just cut it all the way in a diagonal, just like so. And then you're going to take the bendy sides of your straws and just cut those straight across for the mouthpiece. And there you have your pan flute. Don't throw away the pieces that you cut. You can certainly use them again in other projects like our rain stick or just for decoration, I promise. So just make sure you put those aside for later use to recycle and reuse. Take a break. Welcome back. Okay, so we just made our pan flute that was used in Greek that we learned earlier. But who knows why the pitch is different when you blow across the top. Well, if you notice, we have different lengths. We have eight straws that we cut in a diagonal. When I blow from this side, the longest part to the shortest part, did you notice that the sound was lower? And then when it goes to the shorter straw, it's higher? Well, it takes the air longer to travel through this longer straw Therefore, the energy decreases and you hear a lower frequency, a lower pitch. As we move across, the air has less time to, the air moves quicker on the shorter one because there's a shorter length. Therefore, we perceive that as a higher frequency. Try it. If you did my episode with the xylophone, it's the same concept. We took, how many did we take? We took eight, we took six to eight different roll tubes and we had them cut at different lengths. And when we hit each one all the way down, they created different pitches. Try the same concept. If you notice, the same concept works for our pan flute. You can also use bigger straws. Experiment with different sizes. We have a great space here for what? 
Decorating! You know I love to decorate on DIY music. Show me what some of the designs you can put on your pan flute. Okay, let's do one right now. Being that these originated from Greece. Oh, and I almost forgot one important thing. Don't throw away the pieces that you cut. Why? Because we encourage recycling and reusing materials. And this is great filler for other instruments. So if you have beads or anything you've been using on my projects with me, save these. I promise you we will find something to use with them. All right. Let's make our pan flute look cool. Being that these originated in Greece, I think I want to use a Greek key. Have you ever seen a Greek key? The Greek key has been connected to various meanings and some claim that the key is meant to symbolize a maze or a labyrinth. Other interpretations, however, suggest that it's meant to symbolize waves or snakes. The most common form of the Greek key actually appears in a standard square-like pattern, although other patterns do exist. The Greek key, sometimes referred to as the Greek fret, may have a motif to symbolize the river meander east of the ancient town of Miletus, now in Turkey. The Greek key pattern is also meant to symbolize infinite flow or eternal life. So to start off my Greek key pattern, I'm going to take the front and draw a rectangle right along the edge. I'm using brown because I don't have black, but you can use really any color that you want. I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm going to start my Greek key design here. And I'm going to go all the way across just like this, all the way across so that I create a pattern that represents the Meander River on the Asia Minor where the Greek key was inspired by. And who also remembers what the key, Greek key represented in Greece? It represents eternal flow, infinity, which means that things go on and on and on and that life is never ending, which is all the more reason to have fun when you're doing your DIY music projects. Because you have all the time in the world to be creative and express yourself because all your ideas matter. And I'm gonna color this border in right here. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Now we have a pan flute with a Greek key and boom, I already did the other side. Enjoy your pan flute. Can't wait to see them. Put some comments in the bottom. Let me know how yours turned out. If you have any other ideas how you want to decorate yours or even trying maybe some bigger straws. Have fun. Until next time.